Hello everybody, welcome to Late Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco and we're going to do a behind the scenes episode on how I do all of this. Now I've already done one uh, podcast quite a few years ago about the how to become a video podcaster. We're going to go a little more in depth with some things. Some things have been changed, but we're going to change all of this to this. So through the magic of video editing, we're going to turn, we're going to get everything set up from beginning to end. And while you're watching it, I want you to think about the Benny Hill song, also known as Yakety Sax. Welcome to Lee Wine TV. I don't know which one I use. I don't know if I'm using this one or I'm using it for next week. Um, so again, hello everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for this is a special edition of the show, a special episode of the show. Uh, so you want to be a video podcaster too. No, this is not going to be like the Halloween episode where I have dues every year. Um, this is episode 325. There have been 75 episodes since I did... Uh, which is two two fifty since I did uh, how you know about about what I do so um, a little more relaxed I got my wine this is why I did this is why I did the wine review first so I can drink some wine while we do this um, I'm not gonna drink the wine right now all right so um, so how do I do all that so did you like the little setup you know do you saw the Benny Hill song that I hopefully maybe I found. Um, you know, on, on uh, one of these places I, well, I'll cover here in a second where I find music. Hopefully I found something that was similar. I guarantee there is something similar to Yakety Sax. Um, so hopefully there is something like that. If not, well, then you have to think about that for however long I made that. Uh, as you can tell, um, hopefully I, I, there was a couple of spots where I might have done a little, like, uh, um, 
which we'll call it to say what was going on. Like this light over here, of course, and I knew it was going to happen. I knew it. The bulb burnt out on, on, the, on, the, on the work light that lights up the, uh, this half of the thing. Now, this work light, both bulbs work, but I had a spare there, and I spent, I don't know if, if this camera that was over here was still recording because the battery was running dead. Because uh, that camera, I don't think, could have seen me. But I, 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 I futz with that thing for like five minutes try to get the thing open and eventually I figured out how to open it. It's this little plastic thing that you store a spare bulb in and I I haven't opened it in a very long time so I forgot how to open it. Every time I always forget and every time I almost break the thing. So anyway, um, and apparently one half of this doesn't work, which is fine because well we'll get to that here in a second. Alright, so um so I, I did all that right. So let's let's kind of go through some basic resources all right so you want to do all this you know as as economically as possible so here, here's the first thing first thing is you got to have an idea now i had an idea I'd, i thought i would do some wine now my idea was spawned from i had already done some me today videos on viddler um so i was already kind of getting used to doing the whole camera thing um that was inspired because i was watching a guy talk about wine now he was, you know, an owner of a wine shop, so okay, well, he had a bunch of wine he accessed, um, and he brought wine in that he didn't sell too. But mostly, the wine that he had on the show was wine that he sold. And if you don't know who I'm talking about, it's Gary Vaynerchuk. And if you went back to episode number one, you saw that I had a callback, effectively, to how he does his introduction. My introduction is actually very similar in general. I just don't yell as much. Okay, you know, I have a loud voice already, but my I don't yell as quite like he, he does. Um, but anyway, uh, so a little inspiration, you know, I thought, not that I was going to, like, dethrone him or replace him or be the next Gary on, on video wine stuff, but if it happened, it'd be cool. I just, it's like, you know, I not that everyone was doing it, but there was people out there on the internet. I figured I'd make a name for myself a little bit, you know, it, put yourself out there. And... Um, Really, the, the other big reason of doing it was I was starting to go back into studying seriously about wine. So this was a great way to learn about wine. I have to look up the wines. I have to, and, and what I decided I want to do that was different than what I saw most people do was I at least try to give you some backstory, some history, some knowledge about the grapes, the region, the people. Instead of just saying, this is the blah, 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 blah. It tastes like this, smells like this. Thank you very much. Here's my score. Okay. Those, those uh, shows are great because they're really quick, especially if they do one wine at a time. They can get their stuff done in five minutes or less. I mean, hell, the Naked Wine Show was like a one-minute, maybe one-and-a-half-minute um, review of wine. Okay? Now, she doesn't do that anymore. She got to like, a, I think, 1,200 or 1,300 episodes and then just stopped. Now, I didn't watch the last episode to see if that was a goodbye episode like Gary did for 1,000. But... You know, it's like they just stopped. You know, Gary stopped. Um, a lot of people stopped. Uh, you had like the Denver wine guys, or they were. You know, Matt over in uh, in, in Miami, uh, good time with wine. He just does writing now. He doesn't really do any video anymore. Um, there 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 aren't a lot of video people. So um, anyway, so pick an idea. It doesn't have to be wine. It could be crochet. It could be photography. Okay, I guess, you know, I guess you do photography, videos of photography, right? You know, showing all your stuff. You could you could decide to be one, yet, yet another technology reviewer. You know, you want to review gizmos and gadgets. Um, or maybe you specialize in a certain type of gadget, you know, gadgetry. Um, maybe you want to, maybe you want to do videos on cats or videos on, I don't know, gardening or whatever it is. Okay, cars. Whatever it is, you have a passion for it, it means you're going to want to continue to do it. And that's the key. You have to want to continue to do this. As you saw from the setup, now that setup I think took me half an hour. It might have taken like 40 minutes. I don't know, I'll have to, I'll have to look to see how long the, the actual video files are um, because I actually had one camera that recorded the entire thing uh, over there. I don't even know if I'm, I don't even use that one. Uh, I had a camera over here, which is like my regular, my regular still camera. That can only record 20 minutes at a time. I used my iPhone to record a lot of it until I had to move the uh, wine chiller. Um, so, so, and then I used this camera to record 
you know, start recording until it was time to like do all the, the settings for, for stuff. So um, that's going to be the camera's going to tell me how long everything took. But anyway, um, and it's still recording. So it, it, it's, it's going to be like an hour, two hour file or something. I don't know. It's, it's ridiculous. Um, it's the original camera. Not the, it's, the, it's not the original camera. It's the second camera I used. So um, but the whole idea is something like this takes a lot of effort when you get to this point. Now, I didn't start off this way. You look at my first, I don't know, 100-something episodes. It was this table still with a flip cam, okay, still shot in like HD, you know, 720, I think it was, yeah. Um, no microphones, no lighting. It was just I, I, I recorded during the day, let the light come through the windows. You know, those videos actually look pretty good, you know, the lighting and everything. Um, no, no, nothing fancy, right? Um, but every day I had to come up, I, you know, I had to buy the wines. So that's when you review stuff, you have to remember there's a cost involved. If it's something that you just do and you don't have to pay a lot of money, it makes it a lot easier. So, but you have to, you have to keep going. You have to have a, try to be as regular as possible. Try to have a schedule. I try to release every Monday. Now I do have gaps where I take two, three, four, five, maybe even a couple months off, you know, weeks or a couple months off um, between stuff because, you know, life gets in the way. Uh, this is not how I make my living. This is how I made my living. I would probably do a little more often, maybe even more than once a week. Uh, it may not be these long. Of a sh may not be as long of a show. But since I only do it once a week, and I saw people watching on TiVo, I decided to make it more of a long format rather than something that's quick. As I, that's cracked me up. I had a um, marketing email, PR email, um, uh, that I was no. It was an email which I'll get to here later. I'll get to that later. But I was just thinking about that email mobile anyway so um you need the idea you need the commitment you need to be able to do it on a regular basis okay too many people get into this whether it's writing audio or video and they realize it's not just some simple little thing you can whip out in a few minutes there's there's some thought involved there's there's research there's setup with audio or video there's you need quiet time to write you know writing takes a while i mean it takes me a while to write stuff you know i have the occasional written post you know, someone takes me like, three hours to, to write one of those posts. They're already long-winded enough, but, you know, they take a long time to, to write. So um, you have to have the time on a regular basis to do it. Now, one thing you can do like I do, did today, and I do a lot of times, I'll record multiple episodes in one sitting. Now, what that does is it helps free up my time the other weeks I don't record something. So I'm not every week setting up and dropping down. Once I set it up, I might as well take advantage of it, right? Instead of, okay, now i got to break everything down, bring it back upstairs, okay, because that's where everything's stored, and then, you know, do it again next week. So I try to record a couple times, at least a couple episodes at once, sometimes three. Um, just kind of depends on which wine I'm going to do. Uh, I am going to get a Corvin eventually. Uh, they didn't, they, I asked them to sponsor me, they didn't do it, so now i got to pony up the $300. Whew. PayPal button. Anyway, i got to pony up the 300 bucks to get one, and I'm super excited about doing that because it, it'll, it'll, I'll actually probably drink more wine that way. Ooh, this is taking, it smells pretty good. And I'm not telling you which wine it is because it's next week's wine. Um, anyway, as I thought about it, I was like, no, you don't know what the wine is. Um, so take advantage of those types of things. If you're gonna set, do a bunch of setup with video, or even if, you t if, even if you're doing audio podcasts and you've got to do a whole bunch of setups just to get your, your rig going and you're able to do multiple audio podcasts, you should. So, and if you're writing, well, this is not really a thing about writing, okay? So anyway, so what are some resources that you can use if you're going to the video world? Um, so there's there's a few websites that I use, um, some more, re more regularly than others. Uh, some I use a lot when I first really started getting into this. And I learned a good amount of basic stuff, and I don't really go to them as much. But um, Larry Jordan, um, he's uh, he he has a newsletter and a website. Um, he talks, he focuses a little bit more on Final Cut Pro than he does on Adobe Premiere. Um, but he he talks about video editing, and he also talks about audio. Um, he talks about video editing and, and techniques and and things. Um, he's got some tutorials and, and, and classes and seminars and webinars, whatever. Um, there is some paid content. I subscribe to his new newsletter, 
I get he sends something out almost like every day. I mean, whatever he sends out stuff frequently. Um, usually, really good stuff. I don't always read every single article. You know, the newsletter tells you, you know, like a little blurb about it. If it's something interesting, I click on it, go to the website. Um, but a good a good a resource. The frugal filmmaker. This guy has got doing video, you know, on the cheap down to a science. Now I don't look at his stuff all the time, but when I need to know something about how I can do something on the cheap that's still going to be good, I go to him. He's got a website. He's got um, you know videos on YouTube. That's how I found him. Um, he's got some pretty cool stuff. I don't use all of his stuff, but his techniques and, and what he and his philosophy. Um, has helped me out. Izzy Video. This is another guy, um, pretty much is paid content. I don't pay for his stuff. Um, I, I looked at his website for some free stuff. There's some free content on there, some stuff that helps you out. Um, I subscribe to his newsletter. Most of the time the newsletter is just like, uh, do you want to do this? Come see my video, which usually is behind a paywall. So, um, But if you want to pay a little money and, and learn some, some video techniques, he's another really good resource. I've seen some of his videos. Um, he, he knows what he's talking about. Videomaker.com. This is one that I really, really, um, uh, I'm, I'm typing a real quick note for myself here. Um, really helpful. Okay. They have a newsletter also. I subscribe to that. They send out stuff, I think, every day or almost every day. Um, anyway, they, um, they have some really cool stuff, tutorials. I learned some stuff about green screen, um, excuse me, about other things. Uh, real quick, oh, Frugal Filmmaker, I think this is where I found out about these. These are the, uh, the things that I'll talk about them in a little bit. Actually, in one of my notes, so I'm talking about it right now. Um, this, is my, this is my exposure card. It's my white balance card. When we get to cameras, you can get a camera that can do these things. These are very, very valuable, and they were free from, I can't remember the art place, uh, Wilson Art, I think was the name of it. They were free. You got this size, you had like a smaller size, like a keychain size. I just used those. And there's a black one too. I got, I don't know, I got the black one for some reason. I can't remember why. These two work just fine. Okay. Anyway, um, fcp.co, fcp, Final Cut Pro.co. Huge resources, some free stuff. There's some paid stuff there too, but they they like plugins or other or or they or they'll have you know things like from uh, another resource I didn't put down, um, uh, MacBreak, MacBreak Weekly, um, and then um, uh, dang it, what's what's the guy the, the guys ah whatever the guys that host that they also have their own little video production company. Huge resource too. I don't use them a whole lot, but they got some good stuff on there. But fcp.co will have their stuff on there. They'll have other other people's um, links. They'll have links to. I mean, the website itself has uh, information about um, plugins for Final Cut, um, motion compressor, that type of stuff. So really good stuff. And then any other video editor software forums, which that's what fcp.co was supposed to be in my notes. But there's other ones out there. So search them out on the internet. Okay, um, another couple of resources. Uh, this was for music, for, for audio. Productiontracks.com is pretty much who I use if I need some type of video or, I mean, uh, um, music or sound effects. Now, Productiontracks.com is where I got the outro music. It's called Funk Something 128, 128 beats per minute or whatever. Um, so I bought that from them. You got, I got a license, allows me to use it. <clears throat> Um, it's also where I bought the Halloween intro music. Okay, sounds kind of Tim Burton-ish, and that's what I was looking for. And I, you know, the, the font and all that. Again, I paid for that. It's a license. So if you ever get into a situation where, because it happened to me, Google sent me a thing saying, uh, we think you're using copyrighted content. I'm like, and the only thing I had musically was the intro to one of my to the Halloween video from like two years ago, and they're like. Can you prove that you have permission or paid for this? And I was like, uh, yes, please. Here's my receipt. This is when I purchase it. This is the website you can go to. That's where the, that's where the track is. I've paid for it. Um, so they didn't block anything on it, but I haven't looked at the video in a while. But for a long time, it still had the kind of, like, we, we weren't sure if, if it's, you know, meant the copyright stuff. 
Um, it's also where I get all, not all, but I get many of the sound effects for the Halloween episode. Um, also, some of the some of the um, sound sound effects came from Final Cut or GarageBand, that type of stuff. Um, Mark Blasco, B L B as in boy, L A S C O Blasco. Um, he's the gentleman that composed the intro. Now, the first intro I used was from GarageBand. I threw in a couple samples here and there, made it you know kind of I don't know. It was all right. It was okay for for a while, but I decided, man, I'm getting a little serious with this. I paid him the money to, to make the initial composition. What I told him was I sent him I sent him the outro music and I said, one of the podcasts that you you write for, I want you to see if you can combine the musical styles. And that's what he did. He did an outstanding job. Um, if you don't know his work on This Week in Tech or the Twit Twit TV network, um, you you he's done I think almost all of their themes, all their at least all their intros or at least the intro or the outro for every song, every show. Some other people have done some of the other uh, some of the other uh, songs for them, but he does amazing work. He does a lot of jingles. He does commercial work. Um, he's reasonable. I think it was like fifty bucks. Might have been a hundred, but I think it was fifty bucks for. I think I paid fifty bucks down, and then if I liked it, I paid fifty bucks, and I had you know, a license to use it. And then I think I could pay like another hundred or fifty or whatever to have exclusive license. I never did it, and at this point, I don't think I really need to. Um, if somebody else uses it, it's fine, but it's pretty much associated with me at this point. I don't think it's used anywhere else, so um, I'm pretty comfortable letting other people, as long as they pay them for it, you know, use use a song. Uh, for uh, photographs, first first and foremost, make sure. Um, I don't know why I did that. Oh, that should be software. Um, first and foremost, you should be um, not using copyrighted material. I should have said that from the very beginning. So with with audio, make sure you have a license. Make sure it's common. Make sure it's Creative Commons, no license, public domain, whatever. I kind of touched upon that with Google, um, so you can prove that you have the permission to use it. Um, same thing with photos. If you're going to use any type of photos, um, what I do is just go to Google and I look up the, the type of photo I want. And I'll put creative comp or actually in, in Google you can you have settings where you can talk about what size of photo you want, what type of licensing it is, yada yada. Um, Flickr is a good source, but a lot of times with Flickr, these people, you know, a lot of actual photographers use it, so they you know they have their copyrights on there, so you can't really use their stuff. Um, there's also other um, I didn't I, I didn't I thought I had a whole list of this stuff here. What where did it go? Oh, because it's right there. Uh, video blocks, um, video blocks. I think it's dot com, Flickr, Photo Bucket. These are all these are all places that. Um, yeah, I'm surprised I had it way down there. Uh, these are all places that you can get material. Wikipedia, also. Um, again, make sure you make sure if it's if it's a Creative Commons license that you have a link to the source or however you have to you know, the attribution, um, all that kind of stuff. Um, it's really, you know, you can find it, some of the stuff you can buy. Maybe you're going to go to Getty Images or whatever and buy it. So just be legal with it. Okay, equipment. Let's use that equipment real quick. Um, first of all, I buy probably 90% of my equipment on Amazon. With that said, you need to get Amazon Prime if you're going to do that type of buying. If you're going to buy a lot multiple times a year, get the Amazon Prime. Um, I know a couple days ago, I record, I'm recording this on the 29th, I think a couple days ago, they had a special where it was like old school price for Amazon Prime um, for new for new um, subscribers. Um, I saw somebody say buy a gift card to buy it and then when it's time for you to renew, use that. But, you know, anyway, or, you know, buy it as a gift and then re when you have to renew yours, renew it. I didn't worry about it. It's $99. You get free two-day shipping. Just about everything on Amazon has has is Prime eligible. Um, at least everything that I buy, almost everything I buy, um, is Prime eligible. I get it in two days. It's awesome. Um, now on the flip side, it's great to go somewhere and buy something if you need it immediately. Um, and I just say it's nice to be able to support your local retailers and all that. So with that said, I, I still buy a lot. Of, I'm, I'm lazy. 
I got that from being in Chicago. I started ordering stuff from Amazon, ordering stuff online over there. Um, I didn't have a car, so driving somewhere was a hassle. Was you know was inconvenient, especially to buy something that was kind of bulky that I couldn't fit into a backpack. By the way, the backpack that you saw um, in in the setup that's the backpack I've had since 2005. Pretty amazing, all the stuff I fit in that. So kind of I probably pointed something out in that in the, in the intro or in, in the in the setup is that that backpack carries everything except for the tripods and the power like the the um extension cord and i have like this octopus thing so that because you have all these you know you have all the you know, things like this you know that when you plug it in you, you know power strip it sucks right this is like my small like travel power strip um you know this one's not so bad because it fits like that but you know when you're when you're if, if you do this i mean it's, it's it's covering up like half the half the outlets right even this would cover up outlets i mean this was not so bad because there's an outlet there so i could fit two there but a lot of times these power strips suck with these things. So I bought this. It's called an octopus. It's been pretty good so far. I've used it like two or three times, but it's great. Anyway, um, so that the camera I use right now, camera camera I use that I've been using for quite a while, um, is the Canon Vixia HF M500. Excellent camera. It it does phenomenal. Um, I feel like I'm getting professional quality results out of it. I've used it now for. Two years? Yeah, two-ish years. So I think I got this after episode 250, if I remember correctly. Um, so um, I bought it, when I bought it, it was 388 It was originally around $500. I waited and waited and waited and waited for it to drop in price, and it did, like the end of 2012, it dropped in price. And I remember I got it right before my Texas trip, where I went to Perdinalis and Becker and those, those, those wineries. So it was like my first time using it. So um, anyway, uh, now you find it, um, it's like $600 or more for new. So it's a couple years old. So what, what I'm going to tell you is a good replacement, at least on paper and from the reviews, is the current, one of the, one of the more current models of camera. It's another Vixia. It's the HF R500. It's 200 bucks, And it's got... A little bit better capabilities than what this has. I think it has a bigger, I think it actually has a bigger um, uh, image, you know, um, whatever, uh, CCD or whatever it's called. Um, it's got a bigger image thing. Um, it has better zoom on it. This, I mean, the zoom on this is fine, but it has a better zoom. Um, it, I don't record an MP4, I record an um, uh, AVHCD um, because I can record like forever on it. In this camera, MP4, I can't record more than like 30 minutes at a certain setting. The new camera looks like you have as much time as you have space on your card, okay, your, your internal memory card. Um, the Zoom H1. Real quick, the, uh, the camera I used before the Vixia was the, uh, was the Kodak. Uh, I can't remember the model number now. Um, but it was like the camera to have. It's like impossible to get. Um, you're not going to get it for two hundred dollars. It was like two hundred, two hundred fifty dollar camera. It's like six. It's like it's like trying to get this camera now. It's impossible. But anyway, the Zoom H one N or just H one. So I plug in the lavalier mic into it, and you know it's it's uh, it's recording. Oh wow, man, everything's clipping. I should have realized that. There we go. That's much better. Well, we're going to have to try to fix as much of that in the mix as possible. Anyway, there we go. Um, forgot, I used this, when I used this for Brian, for the for Brian and Rick's um, interview, I have the boom mic. The boom mic really requires me to really put this at maximum input. And when I'm doing this, I only have to put it like at half, you know, at 50% input. So hopefully it's not too terribly bad, but... We'll see. Um, so anyway, really good units, $100, $99 um, anywhere. So Best Buy or Amazon, doesn't really matter. A um, couple things to, to make note of. There's there's a couple things in the back. There's a thing called low cut. You want to turn that on. That helps with background noise. I talked about the background noise from all this stuff. It still comes through a little bit, but it cuts out a lot of it. Okay. Um, 
Auto level I turn off because auto level is trying to adjust the loudness at, you know, automatically and you sometimes get these n noticeable like size, I guess the best way to put it. I turn it off and let, let the computer, who has, which is better processing, do this compressor limiter stuff. That, what it's trying to do is it's trying to raise the, raise the, um, the quiet areas you know, to, to a, a certain level is what it's trying to do. Um, and then record format, I use WAV versus MP3. Um, WAV is a little bit less, less lossy than MP3 um, for audio quality, so I use that. Um, but good unit. Um, it has, I, I really never used the internal microphones on it. Um, they're like this, they're like this, a stereo. Apparently it's really good, but I bought it so I could have a lavalier mic. Um, camera remote, this thing. Now this, now the Vixia when it came out, there was a remote that you could buy extra, but you couldn't find it in the United States. Like they didn't make enough. I don't know what it is. You only find it in Japan. It was hard to get. I found a place that sold it and they were out of stock after I did my order. So I went on Amazon, of course, and found it. Now, what I bought was listed as the Rainbow Imaging IRD89. But this is what showed up, uh, and it says JJC. Now, you can find the JJC on Amazon. Um, it was a little bit more. Uh, the JJC was uh, eight bucks. Uh, the Rainbow Imaging, I think, is around the same, same amount. I have a review on it, um, saying it's good. With the Canon one is like $22. Um, it's called the Canon WLD89. Um, I haven't had an issue with this. I think there's only like one thing on here that didn't that didn't do anything. But otherwise, all I need to be able to do is tell it to start and stop recording, zoom in, do the menu function so I can do the white balance and exposure, zoom back out, and, and it does its job. So it, it makes life easier. Big thing though to, to make sure you do is have extra batteries. You, you saw me in the setup put new batteries in. I actually just got those batteries today, 10 of them, for like six bucks, again, Amazon, um, where like one of them would have cost like 350 at the at the drugstore. So um, if it stops working or it kind of works, but it doesn't, that means you need a new battery. Just like your remote for your TV. Okay, um, laptop backpack. Well, it's back there. You saw it. It, it fits a 15 inch laptop. Um, it's a Swiss army one. I don't remember how much it costs. I think it was on between 50 and 80 bucks. It's nine years old. It fits a lot of stuff. So it, it just, they have these more specialized backpacks for, for photography, um, but basically a laptop backpack works. I mean, it has the, has the laptop little thing. It's for the sleeve of the laptop. I have a big thing, so it's good. It works. I, I, I mean, using it since my days at ESPN Zone, I use it now really almost exclusively for this. Um, lights. So uh, again, as a setup, you kind of saw I have lights. Uh, I'll have a picture of these things. Um, I'm actually thinking about buying the newer version because these seem kind of light, but at the same time, the image looks pretty good. And um, so next week's show and this week's show kind of do something a little different. But these, these are the newer N-E-E-W-E-R C-N 160 LED lights. They're about 30 bucks on Amazon. Uh, for 10 bucks more per light, you can get one instead of 160 LED lights, has 216. The reviews say they, they are bright. These are bright. But what I did is I bought these little diffuser mini soft boxes specifically for these, but they'll fit on the, um, the 216s, okay? Um, I didn't put the price down on them, but they weren't that expensive. I think I got them for like all three of them for like 10 bucks or 15 bucks or less. Um, I actually bought them off of eBay because I was trying to get them quick. I was actually trying to get them before the New Year's Eve and Christmas episode um, because on Amazon, they weren't in stock. It was gonna take too long to get here. And on eBay, it was gonna be faster shipping. It was gonna cost me a little bit more, but not, not, ex not an exorbitant amount of money. But they were coming from Hong Kong or something like that. But they showed up pretty quickly. Um, anyway, uh, they're, 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 what's good about them is these lights normally are bright, like you're like squinting, and if you have people on camera that aren't used to being on camera, it's, it, it, it really hurts their eyes. I've gotten used to it. It looks really dark. But then again, that's why you have a camera that has you know, exposure adjustments and white balance adjustments so that you can compensate for that. Um, and why you want a good, this has a pretty decent camera or has a pretty decent sensor on it because that way in low light, it's not really low light, but in low light, you get good quality images. And that separates 
cameras like this versus your iPhone or versus the Kodak uh, camera I have on there or, you know, whatever. Okay. Um, let's see what else. Tripods. You can get tripods for 20 bucks. I mean, the two tripods I use for my lights, I think I bought for 20 bucks. The tripod I use for the actual camera, I bought at Best Buy. I think I paid like 30 or 40. I might have paid a little bit more for it. It's a little bit sturdier than the light ones, but that's why I use it for the camera and not for the lights. The lights are pretty light. I didn't mean to say that. Not, not as a pun, but they're not, they don't have a lot of weight to them. Um, and these tripods are fine. I mean, I could put it, I could put that camera on no problem. Um, lavalier mics. So um, I got the one here. I got another one here. I just ordered like five more. These are cheap. These are cheap mics. You don't need to spend, what is it, 30 bucks? Um, yeah, there's a, uh, no, that's the shotgun. Anyway, the price varies on these on Amazon, anywhere from 50 cents to over three bucks per mic. Now I bought, um, you know, the, the, there's like there's like a Audio Techniques, you know, powered, you know, lavalier mic, and, and those are good because they're powered, so you get more signal. But you can never tell if the battery's dead. Okay, you have no idea when the battery's going to die, so you always have to replace the battery every time you're going to use it. These don't have batteries. You know, my my video my audio recorder tells me the battery strength. Pretty important, um, and I always have extra batteries anyway. Um, but the point is that these are cheap. They, they sound really good for a buck or a couple bucks. I bought a whole bunch more because in the course of the years, they eventually break. Usually it's the little clip or sometimes they stop working. So you always have to have spares, all right? I have some other ones that I bought and I don't remember how I got them. I got them off of Amazon, I'm sure, but they're different than these. And that's a big key. Make sure you use the same brand and the same style if you're gonna put multiple lavaliers together because there's some there's different impedances, which means there's different resistance to the audio or the power, you know, getting sent in. So, you know, I could have this lavalier mic and somebody else have a different one. We're both plugged into my, my audio recorder and I might be louder or softer than the other person. Even though I might talk louder, I may come off as softer or the other way around. So you really want to use the same brand so you have you have some consistency in the power from the mic to the recording device. Um, now, the other thing, though, about these $30 lavalier mics, besides that they're powered, is they'll probably last longer, but I've been using these lavalier mics for almost five years. Like, I haven't had to buy any new ones in a while, so they're fine. Um, let's see. Well, extras. Okay, so... You don't ever see it here. I don't really use it a whole lot, and I did use it in in the um, the interview with Brian and Rick because I didn't have enough of these because I only had two of them, and we had three people on camera, and I couldn't get the mics in time. Um, and like I said, I was going to mix and match my mics. I had to use my boom mic. Now I have a huge boom mic stand. Like this is something. This is professional. This is like a you put in a studio. It's not really meant to be to be carted around necessarily but the big the big um bag you saw that is what that's actually in there so i use it for the green screen to kind of give it a little extra weight so it, it you know spreads out the stuff i mean there's still wrinkles on there but man final cut does a great job at eliminating the wrinkles it's pretty amazing um it's pretty forgiving but anyway um i bought that get the case get the carrying case if you're going to do something like that so only for field work or if you are going to be kind of set up in a especially if you're having more of a permanent setup and you don't want to use the lavalier or you're going to have guests and you don't want to deal with that or you're going to have a lot of people you can put a boom mic on, uh, you can do that. But it's heavy, very heavy. Um, our boom mic itself, I mean, the thing I, um, I didn't really specifically say, don't use the camera mic if possible. At least do a cheap camera, get the zoom in, a, in the dollar lavalier mic. Your sound is going to be so much better. A boom mic is a little bit better. You plug it into the camera and it directs it right to here. Um, it's it's going to be better quality sound. It's not going to be as noisy, but it's still going to get all the ambient noise behind you. When you use the boom, you want to try to have it as straight, far straight down as possible. So you're, you're getting really a direct, like you, you want it like right there, like, like right there. And that's how close you want it. So just off camera. You ever watch those movies where you can tell the guy the boom 
kind of messed up and they, you can see a little bit of the camera of the, of the mic so yeah that's how that's how they do it in the movies and then they also do voiceovers when the sound isn't great um matter of fact, they do voiceover i think almost all the time anyway um so you got that boom mic. The one I have is about 50 to 55 bucks. It's an Audio-Technica ATR 6550 shotgun mic. Um, and then the boom stand, I bought it for about $100 at Guitar Center. When I looked it up, I saw that on Amazon, it was 71 bucks. On Guitar Center, it was like 110. So, you know, I went to Guitar, Guitar Center to buy it. That's one of those things I had to see in person. I couldn't rely on pictures. Because, you know, especially stands, it's kind of hard to get a perspective, especially how sturdy they are. Because they have some other microphone stands that, you know, are flim not flimsy, but they're not, they're not meant to, like, have something stretched out way over to carry a mic. They're, they're, they're a microphone stand, but they're, like, right there for a singer. Um, let's see what else. Cables. Okay, so I already mentioned extension cords and the octopus thing. Um get one of these i had an extra one where did i throw it get one of these this is a three prong to two prong adapter for your extension cable because most of them are two prong so if you're trying to plug let's say a power strip into your extension cord you can't so i have a couple of these you can buy them wherever radio shack at probably at the grocery store or whatever okay um so i have a couple of these because they were that's how i bought it off of amazon you had a pack of two and they were cheap like a dollar um let's see i have i have this one it's like my travel one um i really use it more for for the hotels but i, I this is actually what i used to use all the time because i would plug the camera in but now i have plugs for the lights um, I didn't mention that. So um, they've got these adapters for, for these CN160s. I highly recommend it because the batteries will die in the middle of your episode without fail when it's really important, okay? When it's not important, they'll last forever. But these I have plugged in. So the, the key is you want lights to have battery and you I, these are special adapters. You had to buy extra um, they weren't that expensive. I don't have the price on them. I'll, maybe I'll, I'll, have the, I'll have the pricing on the website or on the lower third. Um, but um, they're wonderful because they stay on all the time. It's great. But that's why I had to get the octopus thing and blah, blah, blah. So you have to have power. Um, otherwise, get batteries. Now, the batteries I have been using, I would suggest not to use, I think it's the Panasonic version. I would suggest to, get, to switch over to the Sony version, which I eventually will buy the large capacity batteries. They fit better. They have better contacts with with the lights. The other ones aren't aren't good, so they don't they don't fit in the charger a lot of times very well. They don't you know the charger and the battery don't seem to like each other after a while. Um, the lights they don't seem they seem to like the connections don't seem to be good or solid. The other ones seem like a much more solid uh, connection because um, that's the connection that these that these power lights are doing. So I'm figuring they're how they fit in there is going to be really secure, like 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 is in there for the batteries. Shop lights. Um, oh, real quick. Um, 3.5, I don't have any out, but 3.5 millimeter extension cables, you know, so when you, like for lavalier mics especially, or if you're using the boom mic, you have to have long cables so that you can stretch it on the boom and plug it into whatever you're plugging into to record. Um, I have, I suggest you get at least a three foot and a six foot, maybe a couple of them. Again, extra cables is always good to have because when cable goes bad, you got, you know, especially if you're out in the middle of nowhere, it's not easy to go get another one, especially if you're like in Fredericksburg, Texas, may not be a radio shack nearby. So you're kind of stuck. Um, so always have a couple around. Um, so you'll need that adapter. I also have, I have a two prong thing that fits into the zoom. It's good, but when I put it in my pocket, it moves around and the sound gets messed up because it's, it's, it's spinning in the connection. I have another one that's like, his one connection has three little like cables that come out. That one I use more often, even if it's only two people on camera. Um, but I like the three to one better. Shop lights. Uh, these are the things that are over here. They're the ones that make me look blah, blah, blah. Okay. Um, they were 30 bucks, 30. I think I paid right around $30 at Walmart a couple years ago for them. They're, they're listed at 34 now. They are, in, in, in these ones I have are the Bayco 1000 watt halogen work light. 
Now there's other halogen work lights that are 1,000 watts or 500 watts that are like 50 bucks, you know, or more. There's one, there's, there's another one you can buy online. I forgot the name of the, the website. Um, they're like 20 bucks and they're probably fine. Um, but you have ones that are 50 to hundred dollars. You don't need them. Okay. Especially if you're in your house, I don't take these out of the house. These are these are strictly for the green screen because you need to light the green screen with other lights. You can't, I can't rely on these lights. I mean, I have gotten away with it in the past, believe it or not, it's actually worked again. Final cut pro is so forgiving with green screen. It's unbelievable. Um, but it still isn't the best. You want to light it up. Now I only use one light from each, so I'm using 500 watts of light on each side. A thousand watts felt like overkill, um, and it gets it gets already gets hot enough as it is. It gets really hot with both of them on. That's one thing about these: when you turn them off, don't touch them. Leave them be for a while. Um, I'm hoping at some point the LED versions will be just as bright and get down to that 30, maybe to 50 dollar range, because then they'll be it'll also be all the same color temperature. Because these are a different color, these are a warmer light because they're halogen versus these are cooler, they're LEDs, blah, blah, blah. It's getting a little technical in, in, in light temperatures and all that. But again, your video editing software usually does a pretty good job of it. I mean, I'm not, the green looks pretty solid green and it's, um, and it's a background. So, and, and, and honestly, and in reality, because the background is kind of a warm background and I get a little bit of spill from these lights, it, a lot of times it looks really good. It really looks like I'm in the cellar sometimes. I mean, not purely in the cellar, but it looks pretty decent. Um, maybe they use a 500 watt bulbs. Actually, I'm gonna get some more 500 watt bulbs. Again, Walmart, you can get them from, Home Depot. Um, there's like a pack of them I, I saw on Amazon. Looks like they're really cheap. It's always great to have the spares around. Um, green screen. So the green screen, you saw it all get set up. The one I bought is from Cowboy Studios, the 10 by 20 foot version. It comes with a support system because you need that. Can't, you don't just need the thing. Unless you're gonna be in a situation where you're gonna be have a wall behind you every time for this, okay? And uh, I don't have a wall. You see that there's a wall behind me, but it's not. I can't put the green screen up all the time. I mean, I have a chest and all that stuff, right? It's a living area. It's the formal dining room. I can't really, can't really do that. But, um, if you're gonna be like in a room dedicated to this, then you can just put the green screen, you don't need the support system, or, or get green paint. There's apparently some green paint you can do, all kinds of stuff. But anyway, uh, so it was 100 bucks, $102 off Amazon. Uh, there's some cheaper ones, but this is the one that's most purchased because some of the cheaper ones, the support system um, isn't as sturdy. These aren't exactly like, you know, super, super sturdy, but they work. And, you know, you can actually have one person set it up. You saw that, one person set the whole thing up. Ideally, you want two because you don't want to have that stress with the with the you know with the angles there. But they they always I've never had it fall. Let's put it that way. Um, let's see. Remember to block any backlighting. Now I don't know if I caught it on camera, but you saw I went behind the behind the thing. So behind the thing, there's a microwave and a refrigerator in the kitchen. And with these lights, more than anything else, this this material, the green screen, isn't truly isn't really thick. So if there's backlighting, it comes through. So while Final Cut Pro is really good, it's not perfect. So to eliminate the backlight, things like you get really thin. And I could use to be, I could, you know, I could use getting really thin, but you look like you're disappearing. Um, so it's not so great to, to try to compensate for that. But anyway, so the lights shine upon the, the chrome on the, uh, on the refrigerator and on the, um, on the microwave. So I have a brown tablecloth that's in the, drawer right over there, and I always put it up so that I don't get any backlighting, okay? Um, clamps, uh, I just got these new clamps. Um, I don't know if they're necessarily any better than the ones I had. The ones I had were from Walmart, they had green tips on them. I thought that was cool because if I got the edges, they're green, so they're part of the green screen. Um, and I mean, they were close enough really to the actual green. I think that's why they made them that way. But they clamp, I clamped them onto the actual um, rod and then sometimes if you didn't clam it right, the, the, the muslin was what it's called, the, the actual green screen would like fall off and they, they didn't really grip on it. When I've seen other green screen setups, these clamps are actually clamping around the, around the, the post and then the actual clamp is on the muslin and it stretches it out. Well, I've stretched this out so much that that's not stretching it out really. So I'm, I, I'm still doing it and they look like they work. I mean, 
They're doing fine. They have blue tips on them, but who cares? Um, and I bought them for, they're like uh, six of them. They were between six and $10. Um, or oh, the ones I bought from, from Home Depot. The new ones were like 12 bucks. Software. All right, uh, I'm gonna really gloss over this because I went over that uh, one of the, I've already gone over it. Pick, if, if you have free software on your computer, try to use it. Um, if you're using green screen, these, these programs may not be the best with that. You may have to go a little more professional. Um, Adobe Premiere um, Pro and Final Cut Pro, I think they're about the same cost. You know, I know Final Cut Pro, I think is $299 or is $199, one of the two. Um, it's worth it, in my opinion. Um, but uh, uh, if, if you need the more professional looking software, get it. Um, pretty much, and I use Final Cut, so I don't really know how well these other programs work. So it's gonna be a Final Cut centric part here. Um, <clears throat> I bought Compressor, I bought Motion. I don't even know why I bought Motion. Motion really isn't worth it. Um, I, you can do some, some fancy graphics and stuff with it, but I don't do fancy graphics. Maybe some point in time in the future, I'll, I'll do some cool stuff, but not on the wine show. Um, compressor, I bought it because I thought I was going to need it. And I found out the way the workflow worked, at least for me, it made things worse. It took too long to do. Uh, and it was kind of complicated. So I do everything in Final Cut. I export it to a master file, a really big master file, okay? The best quality you can get. And then I take MPEG Stream Clip. Now, pre I think that's cross-platform, but it's definitely on OS X. Um, and I have some, you know, I've, I've got some uh, settings, got some presets. Uh, actually, I got from Vimeo um, to, to, uh, for some settings to give some pretty good quality output. And I just do that. And way, what I like about MPEG Stream Clip is that I can put settings, I can set my bit rate. And as I set my bit rate, it's telling me the, the expected file size. And that's key because some places that you're going to upload this stuff can't have more than a certain file size. Maybe it's one gigabyte, maybe it's 1.5 gigabytes, maybe it's less. But with compressor, you don't really know. I mean, it's harder to see that, to, to fiddle with the settings to see what the, what the output size is gonna be. That's why I didn't really like compressor. MPEG does a great job. Um, let's see what else. Audio editing. <clears throat> Audio is really key in my opinion. Um, you can have okay video, but if you have crappy audio, people stop listening to you because they, they're they going to get annoyed, especially in audio podcasts, right? Because they have to use their brain, they use their mind for the um, to, to help with the imagination, right? So uh, Audacity, free editing. Now, again, Final Cut Pro on, on audio editing in general is perfectly fine. The noise reduction is, it's all right. I mean, it does, it, it's quick and dirty. Um, the the uh, EQ, the compressor, the limiter, that's all I do. I sweeten the audio a little bit. Um, the EQ settings I actually got from Larry Jordan. So I have my, as my default preset. I used to just do bass enhancement, give myself a little bit more bass. Um, but this really kind of tunes a little bit more for voice. For, and I use the male voice um, settings. Um, but Audacity, if you need to do some more, more aggressive editing, especially with noise, um, it's free. I've used it. It does the job, but you know it's it's better than Final Cut. Um, I also have used in the past Isotope Music and Speech Cleaner. Again, it's 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 kind of it's a little bit easier to use than Audacity. It's better than Final Cut. Um, it, it's actually pretty decent. It was like twenty bucks, I think it was. Um, then I bought recently. I bought Sound Soap. Now I've been seeing Sound Soap advertised for a long time. And they have two versions. They have a standalone and a Final Cut, or they have a plugin that uses it works in Final Cut and Premiere Pro. I bought the I bought the um, plugin because I thought that would be better. It's not. I use a standalone. Save your money, ninety nine bucks. Um, if if you really want to do it, it's really more intuitive and it's phenomenal for noise reduction. I can't tell you how awesome it's been. On a few episodes, um, it, it it saved some episodes in Napa and and it really helped out. Um, now if you, if you got the ball, if you got, if you got the, if you got the, if you're a baller and you got the money, um, they have, uh, Isotope has a couple more pricier solutions. They're more professional. They have one that's around 350 bucks and they have one that's around $1,100 and they supposedly can work miracles, but you don't need that. 
Um, the H1, the Zoom H1, comes with some called Wave Lab Elements. It also can do some of this noise reduction and other compressor limber stuff. Um, it's free. It's with it. I don't really use it. Um, I already covered that. I already covered. Um, on audio, real quick, again, GarageBand has some stuff. Final Final Cut Pro has some stuff for music, stock music, and sound effects. You can always use that. Uh, I did talk about um, stock music or production tracks. There's also Audio Micro, SFXSource.com. Um, and then, um, let's see, what else? Make your own if you're a musician, if you have the time. I was lazy. I didn't do it. All right, so now, how do you get the video onto the internet? So you spent, we spent 50 minutes talking about that. All right, so here's the thing. This is really one of the reasons why I updated this. Last year, if you were a long if you've been a viewer of the show since last year, you know that I was complaining about how I couldn't, I wouldn't, wasn't on iTunes, on iTunes anymore. Um, and one of my points of pride is that I'm the only current wine web show on iTunes. Yes, there's another wine web show that has put out a few, a few episodes. I think he did four last year. He's done one this year. You know how old those videos are? Two and a half years old. They were recorded in 2012. So while they were released recently on iTunes and on his YouTube channel, they're rehashes. Okay, so I'm still the only current one on iTunes. Um, but to be able to do that, you have to, you can't host your videos on YouTube because iTunes will not take YouTube's RSS feed. What's RSS? Really simple syndication. And that's how you get your stuff onto iTunes. That's how I get my stuff onto TiVo. That's how I get my stuff onto Roku. Okay, um, I, you have to host your video somewhere. Now, when I first started doing this, everybody said, do not host your own videos. Bandwidth costs will kill you, even with standard def. I, I put it in high def, right? My video files are right around 1.5 gigabytes in size. Pretty big, um, pretty big file size. The amount of views I get, we're start, we can start talking about terabytes of bandwidth, and that can start costing real money. Okay. Now, last year when I was looking for this, I didn't, you know, I was looking for places that I could use that were podcast things. Um, excuse me. So I looked at them and bottom line, they were too expensive for me. Okay. But let's talk about some other hosting things. So blip.tv. Now it's probably harder now to get on blip.tv. I'm on it. This is, if you're watching on the website, this is how you're watching it. Um, you used to be able to pay for a pro account that was $8 a month, pretty freaking cheap for unlimited um, unlimited bandwidth. I mean, you had revenue share and they keep like 90% of the revenue, but you get free hosting, right? Um, it used to be one gigabyte file size, now it's 1.5. Um, now it's free, but it's harder to get on to be quote a pro account. You have to have, you know, they, they kind of have to approve your show. Um, I don't know if I would be approved if I had to reapply, but since I've been with them for so long and I still produce quality content, they, they, didn't, they didn't drop me. Now, it's sommelier school stuff. I haven't put out anything in, the, in years. That is gone. I can still log in as that, but those videos are no longer available. So you go to my website, all you can see is the write-up. Um, let's see, YouTube, obviously everybody goes on YouTube, it's free. Um, it used to be a limitation, now it's pretty much unlimited. Files, well, file size unlimited, basically. The length of video can be like 23 hours. Um, you can do whatever you want now, okay? Uh, Vimeo, used to be on Vimeo, um, 60 bucks a year. It's just too expensive for the, for the what, 10 views a year I got out of all my episodes. Um, good quality site, the video player is really good, the video is really good, um, but I, I just don't see my, I, I didn't get any value out of it. Um, Viddler, Viddler is how I started. I have a soft spot in my heart for Viddler. My intro, you see a Viddler t-shirt on. Still to kind of have that callback to give them a little bit of props. Most of the people that I know at Viddler are gone. DJ Steen, you're, you are a rock star. You're still with them. I love you. Um, but now you guys are, well, not you guys. Now Viddler is really an enterprise solution. So somebody like me, it doesn't, it doesn't work. It's, it's not meant for me. And that's fine. You know, I mean, they had to make money. So um, as an enterprise solution, I don't know. I think they're good. But I don't, I don't, I don't need them in that sense. So I think they're probably, you know, just as good as anybody else. But I, I don't know, uh, DJ, you can probably tell me better on that. Tube Mogul, I used to use. Um, so Tube Mogul and Blip.tv, they were these places where you could upload your stuff, upload once, and distribute to many. 
Well, Tube Mogul basically that doesn't exist anymore at all. They are again like Viddler, but they they call themselves a video advertising platform. Um, Blip.tv, the places you can distribute to, pretty much is themselves and YouTube. They still say Roku, and when I do my when I go to my videos, it still says all these smart TVs. I don't, they're not going anywhere. I, there, there's an other category. I have no idea what other means, so maybe some other places are getting it, but their Roku channel, on, uh, Blip TV's Roku channel doesn't exist anymore. Um, you can't get their iOS app anymore, but if you already had it, you can still access videos. So, you know, they, they, really, they really constricted what they do. Um, I, I'm lucky they're still around for what they are. Um, let's see. Already talked about that. Um, when you do your RS feeds, RSS feeds, one thing to really keep in mind is whatever you're using to edit it, make sure you put a limit on how many episodes, <clears throat> especially with video. Um, not really even video. I don't think the video file size has anything to do with it. Um, just make sure you, you edit or you limit your, your um, episodes, number of episodes in the feed. Um, this is where my Blip TV thing kind of started. Um, having an issue with iTunes, my feed size got so large, iTunes was rejecting it. You can have a, a feed size of 512 megabytes, and that's it. You have anything larger. Now, that seems like a lot, but when you have 300 episodes in your feed, or at that point, yeah, I had like 300 episodes, um, that's, a, you know, it's all that text and all those codes and all that, all that stuff. It takes up a lot of space eventually. So, um, and there was no way for me to go into Blip TV anymore and edit that. So for a while, it was working. Now, if I had originally edited it to be like what I have right now is 26, but say 10, which is what I did last year or 50 or whatever, I probably would have never had the issue that I had. Okay? Um, let's see. I've changed it to 26. Because 26 is a full season in television. And I checked the file size, and it's like... 100 megabytes, I'm, I'm golden. Um, so there are some places you can, though, if you want to pay for it and you want to have um, kind of like a turnkey, if that's the right term, um, for podcast hosting, where they host it, they have the bandwidth, they give you the RSS feed, they can set up everything, they, they track it. Some of these places have um, revenue sharing, they put ads, you can look at that. So I'm gonna try to go real quick on this. Libsyn Pro, or Libsyn, this is one of the old school ones. Of course, everyone started with audio podcasting. Now we're getting to video. Um, they start at 50, uh, five bucks a month with 50 megabytes of storage. So if you're doing video, not a lot, unless you're gonna do short videos and like once a month. Um, the highest standard plan is $75 a month. You can have 1.5 gigabytes of monthly storage. Um, these have, this, this is almost all of them are unlimited bandwidth. So you don't have to worry about the bandwidth, but the, how they restrict the bandwidth is how much your file sizes are per month, knowing that the most recent episodes are the ones that are going to be the most watched. That the, the episode from three years ago is not going to be watched as much. It might be watched once in a year, but the ones that are recent, they're the ones that are going to do the bandwidth. So it, they, they kind of restrict your bandwidth in a way. No matter how, you know, even if you're popular, it's not like going to be horrible. But because of my bandwidth that I told them I needed, okay, they said, well, you need the pro version. Because even though it says unlimited, a lot of times unlimited doesn't mean really unlimited. So they wanted to give me $99 for an individual feed or a single show usage, plus some uh, plus bandwidth costs that were anywhere from $0.40 cents per gigabyte up um, down to $0.10 cents per, per gigabyte if I used a whole bunch of bandwidth. <clears throat> so when I looked at that, I looked at how much I normally do, that worked out to almost $1,000 a month. Um, would have been a bit less. So when I told them all this, I said, well, you know, this is last year, remember? I said, well, you know, get away from HD. No, everybody watches video on mobile. Nobody does HD on mobile. It's all standard def, 640 by 320. I was like, no, not doing that, okay? Because I know where my content is watched, and I told them that. I told them we're watching high-definition televisions off of TiVo and Roku, which... On the Roku sites, they're getting the stuff from YouTube, so it's not a big deal. Um, so I was like, no, not you and Libsyn. The guy that has the old videos, he uses them, but his videos are short and they're crappy video. Not, well, yeah, they're not high def. 
all right? Podbean, um, they do audio and video. I contacted them last July or maybe June. And um, basically with them, um, I talked about like moving my whole library over. Um, that was gonna cost $800 to import everything. Um, they said my maximum file size was one gigabyte. And I could have their business level two plan was five gigabytes monthly storage space quota. So that was, you know, okay, 1.5 gigabytes to put out four episodes, so close. If I, if one gigabyte maximum file, so four gigabytes maximum I'm putting up there. So yeah, okay. Um, so when, when we talked about price, Uh, we never got to that point because they were supposed to get back to me and they never did. So I go to the pricing page now. It looks like they have no storage restrictions except for the cheapest plan. Um, I don't remember, in, at least last summer, I don't remember seeing unmetered bandwidth or unmetered storage. Um, but if I sign up today, it looks like I could do the unlimited video plan for $25 a month or $18 billed annually. Um, you can't monetize with Podbean on that um, on that plan, you have to go to the higher one, the next higher up, which is business level one, and that's $79 a month or $59 annually. Nope. Podomatic, don't even go there. You can't get any information. It's stupid. Um, I call that fail. Podcast Garden, not as much of a fail. You still have no information. It looks like they have one little thing talk about you have to sign up to do anything. That's so, that was the other thing about Podomatic. You had to sign up to even see anything. Um, and it looks like it says something about 30 bucks a year or $3 monthly for unlimited episodes. Um, not really sure if that's true or not. They said you could have, you, or you could do unlimited free if you did one episode a month and you had a seven day free trial. But you still had to kind of sign up. Sounds too good to be true. Um, you may have also heard about, you can use Amazon S3, Google Drive, archive.org. You can use them, but these are, you really gotta know what you're doing and you have no support, zero support. You have to know what you're doing. There's no stat tracking, there's no, there's no revenue share, none of that. It's just a place to store your stuff, okay? And if your podcast becomes popular because they do charge you for storage and bandwidth, it can get expensive pretty quickly if you get like a quote slash dot effect. Blueberry, that's who I use. Now, I don't use it for hosting, I use it for my stats, but you can also do hosting um, now, for the stats, I use the WordPress plugin. It's $5 a month. I get all the stats. They're great. Okay. Um, I highly suggest you do that and then host elsewhere. But they also host. Um, their, their cheapest is audio only, $12 a month. They call it the small. The cheapest uh, and the most expensive is called extra large. It's 80 bucks a month. Um, medium is the cheapest for video at 20 a month. Um, they all have unlimited bandwidth. Again, it's storage. You can only do 250 gigabytes of monthly storage with the medium plan at 20 a month. The extra large is one gigabyte per month. Professional says unlimited everything, but you have to contact them. Now back last summer, I asked them and this is what they said. Um, we charge 12 cents per gigabyte bandwidth used. You can upload 10 gigabytes of media per month. Um, each, each, $10, each 10 gigabytes additional is 10 bucks a month more. Uh, there are no other fees. Um, it's $100 minimum charge for the hosting service. If you use less than 833 gigabytes in a month um, and less than 10 gigabytes per storage, a month, you know, storage per month, it's 100 bucks. If you go over that, then they start charging you. Um, so it looked like um, for the bandwidth since last summer, it looks like I probably would have been at 833 or less, but there's no no guarantee on that. Um, but if I ever had like a thousand views on any one particular video or all four in a month that I would put out, double to triple, quadruple the bill, okay? Wasn't looking at that. Web hosting companies, real quick. Um, pretty much most of them suck, okay? Um, so we'll go real quick. HostGator, uh, I use a WordPress hosting, managed work, I use a managed WordPress hosting company. So. I suggest you use WordPress or if you try to use Squarespace or Wix or one of those other ones, you're not going to be able to, I mean, you can, you have to, you have to embed your video because that's why I initially use a Squarespace, um, but you get one website and blah, blah, blah. 
But if you want some WordPress action, you got to go with one of these places. Okay, HostGator is not managed WordPress; it's just a hosting company. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go with it. Um, plus, if you did use it and you knew what you're doing, if you use too much, more than 25 percent or more of the system resources for longer than 90 seconds, you're in violation of the terms of service. Um, so it's not good. They have um, some other plans that allow you to do stuff like that, but they get pretty pricey. Um, so yeah, Bluehost. Um, I think they're managed WordPress hosting. I couldn't quite tell from them. Um, they they kind of have the same verbiage as HostGator, though they don't specify the 25% rule, but I suspect they have something similar. Um, WordPress hosting, um, so the blogger plan is the closest to what I have uh, for 25 bucks a month. Um, but the problem is I don't know if the 25% rule would have, would apply to me. And it's kind of, kind of, uh, um, what you want to call it? Whoops. Uh, too expensive. Oh, it says blue hose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let's see here. If I use them for all that dedicated stuff, uh, it would be pretty expensive. Uh, WordPress engine is managed WordPress hosting. Um, they're, pr they, they look like they could do what I need, but the plan I would probably have to do is hundred dollars a month or $99 a month. Um, compared to what I have at Pressable. Okay. I could do what I do for $29 a month, but I, I, I wouldn't be able to have all the extra stuff I have. SiteGround is more managed WordPress hosting. That one starts, sounds like an almost too good to be true realm. Um, they offer three plans starting at $10 a month. Um, one site, 10 gigabytes of web space. The top tier is $30 as the third plan. Multiple sites, they don't specify any limit, and 30 gigabytes of, quote, web space. Um, it's probably what I would need, but I couldn't have 26 episodes stored because they would be too big. Um, web Hosting Hub, they're hosting only, so I wouldn't use them. Um, and they have something about, high, but they, they have really cheap rates. But it says something about, if you have high data transfer, you have to use your, you should use their Dynamo plan for $11 a month. Again, it's just hosting. It's just a place to put your stuff. So you got to manage all the website stuff. Um, Pressable, that's who I use. Okay, I use them because they're local. I know the people. It's managed WordPress hosting. Um, Rackspace is their backbone. I know Rackspace. They're also local. Um, 25 bucks a month. I get five domains. Unlimited storage. That's key because some of these other places limit your storage. Unlimited bandwidth. I didn't realize that until I was having all these problems last year. And they really mean unlimited. Um, how they charge you is how many visitors a month you get. I never hit the 15,000 visitors a month for all five websites. I'm only using three of the five. And really I'm only using two because one of them is the actual site where these videos reside. There's nothing to see there. But that's the domain instead of using 1337 wine. Um, it was really just because I wanted to keep things separate. I could have put it on, on 1337 wine, but I kept them separate. Um, let's see what else. Um, it's your visitor count. So why do you want managed WordPress? Because they handle everything about WordPress. They do the updating, do the security updates. Um, they're the ones that are constantly making sure um, your site's going to be up. Now, Pressable did have, for a couple weeks, some pretty bad stuff happening. It was frustrating. I love the guys. They're my friends. I gave them all the time in the world to fix it. I'm small potatoes. They, they came through with the service aspect of it. They let everybody know what was going on. They fixed everything. Um, they are a small company, not tiny. I mean, it's not like they only have like 10 customers. They have a lot of customers, but they're not big compared to maybe some other places like Amazon, right? So they have some growing pains they're doing, um, but they, they really know what they're doing. Um, I have no plans on ever leaving them because I, I mean, I looked at the other hosting stuff um, for the, for the episode, you know, I was getting frustrated too. I want to see what else is out there. Right. But it was more for the episode. And I was like, the other plans aren't that good. So um, I'm using them. So whew, hour and nine minutes. So I'm going to keep it under an hour. Um, final thoughts. If you got this far <laughs> props to you, I uh, hope it was informative. I got the, all the links will be on the website, so you got to go to the website for the links. Um, I probably won't hit all the lower thirds, um, but I do have to give a, a huge thank you to somebody, okay? Because last year when I was having all these problems, he helped me out a little bit. 
um, at least pointing me in the right direction on what I needed to do um, because it was the RSS feed that was really giving me the, the, the problems because it was too large. And that's Adam Curry. If you don't know who Adam Curry is, I don't know where you've been, but maybe you're like 20 years old, okay? Or maybe you're even 30 years old. If you're my age, you know who he is. VJ from MTV, Headbangers Ball, all that stuff, okay? After he left MTV, he had a home, he, all the types of stuff he got into, right? But one of the things he's known for is he, his, he has a nickname of the Pod Father. He and Dave Weiner were the people that effectively invented podcasting, okay? Um, and not saying that nobody before them didn't do this stuff, but they're the ones that kind of came up with the specs with how to do it. There's a very famous video um, of Steve Jobs at the D3 or All Things D conference. And um, when they first integrated podcasting into iTunes, okay, because Apple didn't create it, they did. They called it podcasting because the iPod was the dominant MP3 player, okay? And they were webcasting, you know, doing broadcasting on the internet. So um, very famous video, Steve Jobs is gonna feature Adam Curry's daily source code and um, Adam has a few choice words because his, his Mac kept crashing and of course they didn't pre-listen to that particular episode. So it's kind of funny, got a nice little chuckle out of it. Um, but anyway, so he was very instrumental. Um, I follow him in the social media world and other things and I reached out to him, said, hey, can you give me a little bit of help? He analyzed my stuff. He said, this is your big problem is your RSS feed size. He also saw some other stuff that wasn't quite true because it was kind of hard to, to see where my stuff was coming from, but he gave me great advice, pointing me in the right direction. So if I hadn't have had him, I still would have gotten there, but I may not have gotten there as quickly. I may not have understood what the problem was, okay? So, um, uh, and we were talking about using BitTorrent um, cause I heard him talk about it and, um, we never went down that path cause he said he's still trying to figure that out now. He may have figured it out now, but it's, it, BitTorrent is one of those things, again, it would be free just to store the stuff. But again, Blueberry has the stats tracking for me. So it's part of that WordPress, WordPress plugin. So it's all connected and I get five bucks a month to get stats from them. And it's very valuable for me, especially when I have a PR person ask me, Hey, what are your numbers? I can go, here's my numbers from here. Here's my numbers from here. This is my reach. Okay. Assuming that that PR person researched me and isn't asking me to sell their stupid bottled water because they're on the Grammys. Unless you're turning the water into wine, I don't want to hear it. That happened today. My reply to them didn't say the water into wine comment, but I did say, I'm a video wine show. Surely you've seen my videos. That was the sarcasm in the email. And um, I don't think water is appropriate or whatever would fit my video wine show and left it at that. Usually those people, when I get a little snarky with them, never reply. That's the point. Trying to let them know, do a little research before you start asking me about stuff. Because just because I have a podcast or have a blog, I don't have readers that's what they assume I do. Just because I have a blog doesn't mean I'm going to take your puff piece or take your native advertising and put it on my stuff. Anyway, done with the soapbox. We went really long. Um, I really appreciate it. If you had, a, if you really learned a lot, let me know if you have any questions whatsoever about how to do something. If you know, I glossed over something really quick or the, the link you went to is dead or the link you went to didn't make sense and you want some advice on settings or whatever, feel free to let me know. I will help anybody for free. I'm not gonna charge you. I mean, I want people to get into this. Video, especially made by people like us, is great. We don't have to have the corporate entities behind us to make excellent content. Um, just like you don't need the corporate entities behind you to make great written content on blogs. Just because you're a blogger doesn't mean you don't know how to do journalism, don't know how to write, you don't know how to do television, you don't know how to do audio. Um, it helps if you've had a background in some of this stuff or you've had a little bit of training. I mean, I, I, I had very minimal video training, but I've had some audio training because that was my degree in music. I had to do some audio engineering. Not this type, but 
close enough. So, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's, I, I want more people to do this. If you want to do a video podcast, I welcome it. We need more people doing video on wine. James Melendez and, and I are, I think, the only two independent ones out there. Okay. There's two other people. Okay. Um, Jessica Altiere and, oh, I can't remember the other lady's name. They do quality work but they have a lot of backing. They have a lot of financial backing. They have partners. They're also former, um, uh, they're former news people, like, you know, camp, you know, reporters. Um, I think both of them have passed their level one, so they know their wine. It's not that they don't know anything, okay? Um, but they do something different, okay? It's, it's very reporterish. It's very TV. You know, me and James, we, we're, we're man, we're right there, dude. We just let you know, James James is really short to the point. He does one wine. He uses laptop, he uses his laptop uh, webcam. You know, he get he puts out a lot of stuff. If you don't watch him, you should, okay? Um, you really should try him. He's called James the Wine Guy on Twitter. You can find him on YouTube, so check him out. Um, but outside of that, everything else is magazines and wineries. So on the video side, there really isn't anybody out there but the four of us putting out regular current content current content okay on a regular basis most everyone else stopped a year two three four years ago they gave up it was too hard cost too much money it cost a lot of money hit the paypal button um so yeah anyway uh like i said if you have any questions feel free to ask me i'll be more than happy to tell you whatever you need to know. If I don't know, I'll try to find out for you or I'll at least point you in the right direction to find out. Um, I'm not going to give my phone number because I'm not going to always answer my phone. But if we ever get to the point where we need to have more of a one-on-one conversation, phone call, or we do a Skype call, whatever. Skype is awesome. We didn't even go through that. That's fine. Um, all this other stuff. So um, that's it. Thank you again. Friend me up above. Hit the PayPal button over there, send me a couple ducats, and we'll see everyone again next time with the really cool wine I'm drinking.